Okay, this is 4.10 uh, surface area of 3D objects. So probably what's going to happen in your class is that your teacher uh, is going to um, have you do some projects of making what we call nets and uh, uh, turning a 2D piece of paper from a certain shape, cutting it out and folding it and taping it and making a 3D object. And so what you can see uh, in front of you in your workbook is we've got three three-dimensional shapes. One looks like a spaghetti box, you can see right here. Another one looks like a little uh, regular uh, polygon square cube, tea box perhaps, and one looks like one of those triangular juice boxes. Okay, So what you see below this is what we call a net, and that's like cutting these 3D objects, let's pretend they're made out of cardboard, cutting them along their seams and unfolding them into one shape and you can see that uh, we have what we call a net. Now what we want you to do here is try to match each package shape with its net. So the first one is the spaghetti package. Just imagine that you've got a cardboard uh, box of spaghetti, uh, filled with spaghetti here, and if we were to cut along the seams, what would it look like if we unfolded it? I'm thinking probably that this spaghetti box would probably be matched with that one right there if we were to cut along the seams and unfold it. You can see the shapes are very similar because we've got these long shapes right here of the sides. One, two, three, four of them and then two small square ends kind of matching this one. This tea box looks like it's a cube. All the six sides are the same. Think of it as a dice. I'm thinking it probably gets matched with this one right here. And then the triangular one is probably matched with that one right there. Okay, so we've got a 3D object here at the top. Cut along the seams here. And then you can unfold it and you've got what we call a net. Okay, so for uh, this particular part of the chapter you're going to need scissors, a ruler, perhaps a paper cone, okay, to do one of the examples. Okay, but let's just go down and try uh, one of these examples down here. So imagine cutting apart boxes so that you can put them in a recycling bin. How much cardboard was used to make this triangular prism? It says do not include any flaps. Okay, so we've got this triangular prism right here and it kind of looks like um, a Toblerone chocolate bar box. You've probably seen that in the store. And what does it look like when it's unfolded? Cut along the seams and unfold it, or perhaps unglue it, or if you want to break it apart to recycle it. It looks like that. This is its net. Okay, so we want to calculate what the total surface area is of this 3D shape. And we can use this 2D net here. So we want to calculate the surface area of each surface and add them all together. So we have to first look at what are the faces in the net. Well, we have five faces. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, three that look rectangular and two triangular when we unfold it. So we've got how many congruent triangles? Well, it looks like we have two congruent triangles for the ends and three congruent rectangles for the sides. We know what the word congruent means from the uh, previous. It means that they're the same. Okay, so let's just get some terminology under the, out of the way first. We have a face. The face is a 2D shape that forms a flat surface of a 3D object. And then surface area is the sum of all the areas of the faces of a 3D object. So you can see we have five faces here and we want to find the surface area of each one of those faces and add them together. So what is the surface area of the prism? Well the surface area is just the area of the triangle. One triangle, we have two of them so we multiply it by two and we add the area of the rectangle and we multiply that by three because we have three rectangles. Okay, so well, let's just go, let's go back here to number one here, okay, and they left us a little bit of room down here at the bottom. Well, don't mind that. And let's see if we can figure this out. Well, the area of the triangle. Well, we have a height 
and do we have a base yes we have a base because you can see this little these little lines right here that means that all of these lengths of sides are the same okay and this one here says that it's two inches so that means that this base here is two inches so we know that the area of a triangle is base times the height divided by two okay so we'll call this the area of the triangle okay which is equal to the base is two inches times our height of our triangle is one and three quarters we can say it's 1.75 because that's what three quarters is 1.75 and we'll divide that by two now we've got a two over a two because we're multiplying we can cancel the, those twos out so we get the area of one triangle is 1.75 now how many triangles do we have we've got two of them so 1.75 plus 1.75 is equal to well if you want to take your calculator out you can use your calculator okay if you don't trust your uh, head math so we can take 1.75 times 2 and we get an answer of 3.5 okay so this is 3.5 and our units are inches so we can say that they are inches squared now that's our two rectangle our two triangles and let's go to the rectangles area of a rectangle is just equal to length times width okay and our length is six and our width is two which is equal to twelve okay and we have three of them so we just take twelve times three is equal to 30, 36 inches squared total for the rectangle. So we just add these two dimensions together of 3.5 and 36, and we get an answer of a surface area. We could just say surface area. Maybe we should have put SA here. SA is better way to do this for surface area. The surface area, and I'm going to put T down here for total, or just surface area total, is just equal to 36, pardon the messiness, 36 plus 3.5, which is just equal to 39.5 inches squared. And that is our total. Make sure you include your units. Okay, surface area or area is always in squared okay and that's how you would calculate the area of a 3d surface area of a 3d object from a net okay if you if you don't want to break it down into a net then what you can do is that you can just go around the 3d object and you can just visualize how many surfaces that you have and what their dimensions are and you can just do the calculations from there okay so that's all there is for this unit go ahead and do the practice and some of the other examples